We are joined by Joan Mamassini, the head women's basketball coach at Seattle University. Uh, coach, if you can just give us your general thoughts headed into the season. Well, um, like everyone, I'm very excited about this season. Um, we have a young team. We only have two seniors. Uh, lost three quality players from last year's team. So on paper, and I mean, it's realistic. We lost a bunch in, in numbers and experience. But I like the talent of this team. Um, I think we have good talent coming back. Uh, we also have some really good young kids. But more than anything, it's about the culture. It's about the commitment. It's about the work ethic and the chemistry. And, and those are the key things. And so I, I like what we're doing right now. I think uh, we're definitely a work in progress. And we're a little bit unknown. But I think the culture of our program that we've set is about hard work. Uh, we'll produce good results. And uh, so I feel good. Uh, the Red Hawks have had some luck in this building the last uh, two WAC tournaments. You've made the title game each of the last two seasons. Mm -hmm. uh, what does your team have to do to make it three in a row? Well, we want to make it three in a row and be in that title game, but we want to knock down that door and win it and go to the NCAA tournament. Um, you know, two years ago we were fortunate. Here's our first year in the WAC, and we win the regular season. And that's hard to do. You know, it was a – I think of all the things, and personally in my career, that I've been fortunate to be involved with, um, winning that title was the most, um, it was a big thing. It, it was a very big thing for us to do that. Uh, we were upset in the conference tournament two years ago and uh, went to the NIT, and then last year went to the final in, uh, in the conference tournament, WAC conference tournament. Our goal every year is to win the conference regular season, to win the conference tournament, and to advance to the NCAA tournament. And that's the standard we, we set. That's what we practice to and play for every game. And um, we're working hard to do that. Coach, how many teams in the league do you feel are contenders to potentially win it this season? You know, we respect everyone. So um, what's on paper? I mean, we were favored to win last year. For a number of reasons, we, we didn't, you know, as bottom line. And, and so I think the thing I've learned in my career, and I've been fortunate to win a lot of games, is you respect everyone. And, uh, and so um, there's teams that, that are bringing back more players and experience. That plays a factor. But particularly in this conference of, of the distance you have to travel to be on the road, of how you handle yourself as a program and as a team and how well you travel and how well you play on the road will be key factors to who wins the conference title. Now looking around the league, there aren't a lot of teams that have experience going to the NCAA tournament. Uh, for a lot of them, their next trip will be the first. Is that sort of an exciting prospect for a coach that there is sort of that path there for a lot of, a new, a lot of new blood? Well, I've been a few times. Well, yeah. yeah, I've been a few times. So, you know, I think um, I'll take talent over experience any day of the week though. You know, so I've experienced it. I know what it takes. I have people work for me that have been to the tournament and been far in the tournament. And so, you know, for all of us, and we set the bar, we set the culture for our program and for our players. And, and believe me, when I'm recruiting, these are the things we talk about. We don't just talk about winning the conference. We talk about advancing in the tournament. So those are some lofty things to talk about. Talk is cheap. you got to back it up. And so... You know, there's, but there's no shortcuts for hard work. You got to do it. You got to do it every day and um, lace up those shoes and go. I mean, these are, it's just like in life. I mean, there's no shortcuts to, to being successful. One of my favorite qu quotes is the only place success comes before work is in the dictionary. So, I mean, you got to work it and do it every single day. Uh, your team was one of the top shooting teams in the nation last year. Mm -hmm. uh, did, do you attribute that to just the talent you had, or is that something you really worked on day we in We work day on out? it. I think part of it is talent, but, you know, I think one of the differences with us, and, and I wouldn't say every team in the conference, but I think the overall conference, a lot of teams in, in the WAC are on the women's side are really great three-point shooting teams. And for us, I've always tried to be a balanced coach of both an inside game and an outside game. So we had a very good post player. Uh, and Casey Sao is a terrific player in the WAC and playing pro right now in, in Germany. But um, we do return some quality posts. Both have uh, started and 
One is Taylor Ross, who's 6'3", who started about half the games last year. She's a junior. And then the other one is Wilma Funigo, uh, who started about the second half of the year, all those games, and uh, shot almost 65% from the floor. You know, those are going to help your stats and for the team. So, you know, that's going to improve our field goal percentage because we're more balanced. Coach, you pretty much just answered my question for me, but uh, talk about, so Taylor and Wilma in the top five, both of, or both of them in the top five of the WAC sh uh, in Shoot. shooting percentage. Right. What is it that makes them so efficient? They take good shots. You know, the reason teams, um, you know, I've done this a long time, so I understand. You want to take, I'll take a layup every day, any time over a three. Now, some people may disagree with me, but that's been my philosophy. We will shoot threes, and we're going to be a better shooting, three-point shooting team this year than we were last year, and I can already tell. But we'll always – I'll play percentages and get a layup any time. So we design both our offense and our early offense into getting good quality shots. And so that's the thing I try to do in practice in teaching what's a good shot and put people in situations and our players in situations that they can be successful. For your returning players this year, how hungry do you think they are to, to come back and, and win it all this year after losing a, you know, getting to the championship and falling short? Yeah. Well, I think, you know, um, we're going to have some young kids in the lineup and some, their roles are going to change. Some, it wouldn't surprise me. You know, I've started freshmen in the past. I, in fact, we ended up the season last year starting two freshmen. It wouldn't surprise me that a freshman or a new player comes in and, and starts for us or gets a lot of playing time. And that will might change during the course of the year. But um, these kids are hungry. Uh, we're, like I said, we're, we lost a really good core group, but we also have kids who have, feel like they have an opportunity here and something to prove. So you say you're open to starting freshmen. So far in practice, are there any newcomers that you've seen that have kind of caught your eye that you yeah, think definitely. could make I'd a name for themselves? Two, um, two particularly right now. I'd say uh, we have a player from New Zealand, six-foot um, wing. She could play a three or a four, stretch four. Her name's Jacinta Beckley. And uh, we call her Jay. Jay is a great three-point shooter, but also can finish around the basket. Just smart. Plays on the uh, under-20 team for New Zealand. The other player is doing uh, very well. Jasmine Johnson, little guard. She's like a rocket, quick as heck. Great on-ball defender. Play it comes from a great program uh, at high school in Southern California at Linwood High School. Coach, what's your perception of the conference as a whole and how you guys match up nationally compared to other leagues? How we match up with other leagues? Yeah. Well, I think just in our conference, um, good basketball here. Good, good coaches, very good coaches, smart, um, good teams and good players. You know, um, and Tiana Otland, I think, is a terrific player from Bakersfield. I think she's really good. Um, I think we've, we have some really good players. They're smart. Um, in overall, compared to other conferences, I think we're different. And I think as a conference overall, I said a lot of teams are shooting the three, you know, a lot more. Uh, and we're a little bit more balanced. I think it depends on the conference. You know, let's say on the West Coast, Pac-12, they're much more power inside, outside. I think West Coast Conference is um, a little more post, but they also have some great guards too. You know, but we, the WAC is good basketball, really good basketball. But this is the thing, if how you get respect is by going to postseason and winning some games. That's how you get it. Now, you've been at Seattle, and Seattle's been in a couple different versions of the WAC. How does this current group of teams compare to that one? Well, we were there for one year. Our, <clears throat> our first year in the WAC, we had other teams in there. Um, they, it was more inside-outside game, too. They, they did shoot a lot of threes. Again, we were the team that was probably the most balanced inside-outside, even from the first year in the WAC to our second year last year. But um, it's still good basketball. I'll tell you, the difference is the more travel. I mean, we, you know, it's for everyone. When you go to, from Seattle to Edinburgh or Seattle to Chicago State, and uh, it's still a long way. But that's true for everyone coming out our way, too.